Nine years ago, me and my family moved to a new home. It was a really scary prospect for me, leaving a place I was familiar with in favor of somewhere I wasn't. I remember the first night we were back home and I learned my bedroom lights didn't dim like the way they did in the old house. There were only two options, on and off. Change is a scary thing, and still not all that used to it. And yet, through it all, I am here now. And during that change, I discovered the show that would change my life. Battle for Dream Island. Here's a fun fact, I actually went about half a year without knowing that season 1 even existed. For me, it was just BFDIA and Carrie's Agaloo series. The ripple effect was pretty unprecedented. BFDI has forever shaped my identity. Without it, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you on this channel today. That show, alongside an anime insanity, forever changed the way I acted, the way I created, the way I dreamed. And when BFDIA never came to its conclusion, I was as restless as everybody else. At the same time, I was discovering a whole other world, the Optic Show community. BFDIA 6 was coming out. BFDIA 6 wasn't coming out. BFDIA 6 was missing. Where is it? If it even was at all. It was a myth. A mystery. A legend. It united all those who thought about it. I remember watching all kinds of fake BFDIA 6 episodes and scripts, just talking about what it could have possibly been. Three years. That was the longest documented hiatus BFDI has ever been on. It may seem silly now, but back then the wait was incredibly restless and confusing. So when Michael and Carrie slowly made their return to YouTube in 2016, when they started making videos again with Twow and Backbone, and when their AdSense was finally passed over, everybody knew it was only a matter of time. I remember waking up on that fateful Friday, I wasn't allowed to use the TV, so I stuck into my mom's room and used her phone. I searched for BFDIA 6, waiting with anxious, bated breath. However, IDFB1 appeared instead. Perhaps a story for another time. As time went on, as jokes were made by the audience and the crew themselves, BFDIA 6 continued to be a myth, a mystery, a legend. Perhaps that was for the best. But in the time between the silence of Jack and Jelfi and the dawn of Teapot, People who were present for that wait, people who resided in their own corners and made their own shows, now they were working with Huang Brothers, the same ones that disappeared for three years, the ones who are a legend. When I saw this cryptic episode announcement, I was taken aback. Teapot? No, wait, that's yo, -Yo City, and the text is different. IDFB is back? Maybe. Regardless, time ticked down and speculation arose. I actually guessed that there was a chance of it being BFDIA 6, but it wasn't a definitive theory. I was planning on doing it before after recording, but I had school, so I never got around to it. And then, before I even knew what was coming, it arrived. BFDIA 6 isn't breaking any world records for object shows. It's not going to cure cancer or part the Red Sea. But overall, it's still a pretty entertaining watch. It's BFDIA, what else do I have to tell you? Writing-wise, things have definitely changed. Characters like Rocky, Ice Cube, Spongy, who were once afterthoughts, get considerably more attention now. Nichols' writing style has completely changed as they're dedicated to making him a completely different character from his I.I. counterpart. More specifically, it's reflected through its differences compared to the deleted scenes, as here is definitely a lot more lighthearted and comedic. You are obsessed with the oil berries. You've been feeding them to everybody. What? You know, in an alternate universe, I feel like I would have said no. But in this universe, I'm feeling yes. Hooray! More often than not, it feels a bit like teapots, right? But I'm cool with that. Maybe it's because I like teapot, but while the writing style caused me to raise eyebrows, it didn't really ruin anything for me. After the most predictable illumination ever, the challenge is relatively tame. You live in Yoyo City now, so try and find a place to sleep. They actually get pretty creative with this challenge, and in the latter half, the drama really ramps up. If you had told a 9-year-old me that BFDIA 6 was going to have an actual fight scene between Wobunch and Free Smart, I would have freaked out. That's how unrelentingly cool this sequence was. In general, this episode is really good animation. The asset design is stellar, and it's just really nice to see the original BFDI assets be used in an official capacity, something they have been teasing for a few months. I love Evil Leafy being this unrelenting force in nature, actively chasing everybody else for her prey. I still love finally seeing Puffpaw get eliminated. I love getting to see more of Yolo City, this obscure location that felt near forgotten for a while. I love seeing the continuity with the announcer and his future role in BFB. 
These all seem small in a vacuum, but they're all major aspects of attention to detail. They're clear indicators that the crew wanted to make sure this was handled with care. They even brought back the old voting system with the videos and everything. And the way the episode ended with a direct parallel to IDFB1, I sat there on the night this episode came out, smiling. Because it was real. The myth, the mystery, the legend, BFDIA6 had become fully realized. I was here to see it firsthand. Finally, the promise had been made. Sam, the head writer on Teapot, has said that it and BFDIA will be running concurrently. Indeed, when they say BFDIA is back, they mean it, and the current plan is for every upcoming episode to lead into IDFB. It's easy to get cynical and concerned. Is such a workload feasible for the BFDI team? And the change in writing style may become more contentious as time goes on. BFDIA 6, the myth, the mystery, the legend, was finally put to rest. And now, the show continues forward. What does that truly mean, however? What's going to happen to the community, the show, the legend, and how is this going to move forward? I'd be lying if I said I didn't trust the team. BFDIA 6 was handled with a lot of love and care. It was something that, for one brief moment, united all of us in the community in a crescendo. Those who were in the community during the wait, those who came after the wait, and those who are here now. It doesn't matter what the future holds for BFDIA 7, 8, 9 onwards, because what matters is that BFDIA 6 happened, and it was special. We look back on the past to see how far we've come. We look to the future to see what comes next. But the present, the here and now, is what's truly, especially important. I think we should enjoy that present while we still can. Don't you? Want a break from the ads? If you tap now to watch a short- Fight!